Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. If you are a regular subscriber to our channel and a regular viewer, say hi in the comments. Let me know, I'll be looking. In today's video, there's a lot we need to go over. There's big things happening this week. We're gonna go over a few different altcoins, a few different metrics to kind of show you what's happening in the world of cryptocurrency so we can make better decisions going forward as cryptocurrency investors and cryptocurrency enthusiasts. If you appreciate that, take two seconds, like the video, let's start here. The price of Bitcoin might be low, but people are taking advantage and buying the dip. The number of people who are using this to their advantage and accumulating one whole Bitcoin is going up based on this metric. Bitcoin wallet sizes with one Bitcoin or over. Look at this growth. 900,000 people own one whole Bitcoin. Pretty cool. Yet all eyes are on Ethereum this month as the merge to take Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake is about 11, 12 days away. September 13th, September 14th, huge moment in crypto. And Ethereum versus Bitcoin, this chart, Ethereum continuing to outperform Bitcoin heading into the merge. Total ETH staked, as in people who are sending their Ethereum to the beacon chain to get that yield before Ethereum goes fully proof of stake. This is signaling confidence in Ethereum. This is signaling, I think the merge is going to be successful. I want some of the yield. Total ETH staked more than doubles ahead of the Ethereum merge. You'll love to see it. Yet the merge to proof of stake is only a chapter or two in the story of Ethereum. And there's a lot of upgrades and development that we're anticipating after the merge, most notably all the Ethereum L2s, which continue to develop and help Ethereum scale. For instance, Ethereum L2 Arbitrum completes Nitro upgrade. Let me tell you about this. So Arbitrum has completed its Nitro upgrade. The results, Nitro increases transaction throughput, reduces fees, and provides a better user experience for developers building applications. Now that Nitro has expanded Arbitrum's transaction throughput, the network will likely restart its Arbitrum Odyssey campaign. So different protocols, dApps that were halted because this was not a feature yet can now continue again. And let's really dive in. What exactly is Arbitrum doing for Ethereum as a layer two scaling solution? Arbitrum Nitro removes the limitations placed on the network and introduces several key improvements. Previously, Arbitrum's transaction throughput was throttled to maintain network performance and stability. However, now that the network has upgraded to Nitro, these limitations have been lifted, vastly increasing the number of transactions the network can handle. The Nitro upgrade has also helped compress the transaction data sent back to Ethereum mainnet for validation. Nitro should reduce the number of zero bytes in Arbitrum transaction batches, resulting in even lower transaction fees for end users. While Arbitrum already offers 90 to 95 lower fees than Ethereum mainnet, calculations suggest that by eliminating zero bytes, the Nitro upgrade could reduce fees by a further 27%. However, the bulk of the Nitro upgrade comes in the form of a new prover, which can process Arbitrum's interactive fraud proofs using web assembly code. This means that the Arbitrum engine can now be written and compiled using standard languages and tools, replacing the custom designed language and compiler that was previously used. The result is a much more streamlined and intuitive experience for those building on Arbitrum which the team hopes will lead to increased development of the network. You'll love to see things like this. And Ethereum has just so many different types of side chains or L2s. Let's talk about Polygon. I know we happen to have a lot of Polygon fans in our audience. Take a look at this chart. The carbon impact of NFTs on Polygon is less than a Google search or sending a text message. Let that sink in for a minute. Ethereum is scaling, buckle up. So as the years continue, and right now the narrative in the mainstream with gamers and all these people is that I, I don't like NFTs, they use too much energy just because they're ignorant. They don't know, and especially as these things get more built out and more integrations and more adoption, they're gonna realize, hey, NFTs aren't so bad and they're really not impacting the environment with L2s and Ethereum moving to proof of stake like this. 
Yet, Ethereum, Polygon, L2s, they are not the only game in town. Cardano fans, Cardano is now on Robinhood. Is this amazing news? Maybe not amazing, but overall, this is the trend. This is the direction we like to see. This is huge, I think. Ticketmaster will issue NFTs on Flow. Ticketmaster has quietly minted over 5 million NFTs in the last six months as part of a pilot program. We didn't even know this was happening. Today, it announced plans to expand its initiative into the upcoming NFL season. So Ticketmaster publicly unveiled its NFT program today after a quiet six-month pilot. The company will issue NFTs on Flow Blockchain, an NFT-centric blockchain developed by Dapper Labs. Ticketmaster has plans to issue NFTs to ticket holders for a select 100 NFL games this season. And besides it being kind of like a POAP type thing where it's just proof of attendance, also they're offering perks like meeting celebrities, you know, different events if you hold on to certain NFTs. It's exciting that they're doing this. And speaking of Dapper Labs, do we realize that Dapper already has partnerships with the NFL, the NBA, La Liga, UFC, and Warner Music? I mean, where crypto is today compared to where crypto was last bear market, 2018, 2019, we're on a whole different level. Do you own an Ethereum ENS domain name or maybe a another one that's not Ethereum? Well, speaking about ENS names, so Ethereum specific, 301,000 new ETH names were created in August. So people keep buying these things. I own maybe like one or two, but some people really buy them. Just wanted to update you this metric. Let's talk about this, my friends. Let's talk about this. I mean, this is what I really want to get your kind of like opinion on. MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor are being sued by the DC Attorney General for tax fraud. Saylor has avoided paying taxes in DC for years, allegedly, according to the Attorney General. Now they're suing him. Oh, here it goes. Between unpaid taxes and penalties, the uh, Attorney General estimates that Saylor and MicroStrategy could be on the hook for more than 100 million, which is a lot of money to you and me, but if Michael Saylor is a billionaire, it doesn't seem like it's that much money to him. So is this maybe more like a hit job, a hit piece, kind of like just meant for people not to like Sailor, not to like Bitcoin? Anyway, Sailor responded to this saying that he lives in Miami Beach now. That's his main residency. So he doesn't have to pay the income tax in Washington, D.C. His exact quote, a decade ago, I bought a historic house in Miami Beach and moved my home there from Virginia, Saylor told Decrypt in a statement according to the lawsuit. Although MicroStrategy is based in Virginia, Florida is where I live, vote, and have reported for jury duty, and it is at the center of my personal and family life. I respectfully disagree with the position of the District of Columbia and look forward to a fair resolution in the courts. I would think at least part of this is DC going after Saylor because his whole life, his whole brand is Bitcoin now. And they're really, you know, this is the part where it's, you know, at first they laugh at you, now they're fighting us. And this is just a little taste, but then we're getting stuff like this. The DOJ requested documents from Binance CEO CZ. US prosecutors asked Binance and its CEO CZ to provide documents related to its anti-money laundering checks and the team's communication on the matter. I mean, they sense that crypto is just getting bigger. So they're really trying to, you know, pick apart some of the leaders. But there's all sorts of things going on, you know. As you know, Sam Bankman-Fried, Joe Biden's second largest donor. We all know how much Joe Biden loves to serve his donors. And, you know, FTX's Sam Bankman-Fried just visited the White House in May. So that's a good thing that's happening. Former CFTC Commissioner Jill Summers joins FTX US Derivatives Board. So she left politics, she left the CFTC to get the money over at FTX. This is a big win for FTX and just a big win for crypto because some people who would normally fight the exchanges maybe are just joining up and I, I think it's overall a good thing. And then in addition to the good things and the bad things, another good thing, California crypto licensing bill awaits governor's signature. The bill would establish a crypto license in the Golden State 
in one step away from becoming law. So there's a little silent war going on right now. You know, they're picking apart crypto leaders, big crypto companies. Also, some people are joining up. It's just interesting to bear witness to all of this. Because like I said, the future is Web3. Everybody can see it. Why Brazil's top esports team, by the way, just like crypto, esports only grows in popularity every year. Why Brazil's top esports team, Loud, sees massive opportunity in Web3. Gaming team Loud's new parent company, Space Caps, is pursuing Solana-based NFTs, tokenized rewards, and play-to-earn gaming. Win for Solana, win for Web3, win for gaming, win for crypto. And that is the news today, my friends. Join the team. We keep you informed on the entire cryptocurrency market on a daily basis, making it so that you are better informed for crypto investors and crypto enthusiasts with good information. Like the video if you got value, and I'll see you tomorrow, my friends.